A battery of electromotive force and negligible internal resistance. Very good. Ay, the internal resistance make things complicated only. It's set up in this circuit. The current is shown I1, I2. Current come here, current split. Which equation is correct? Oh wow, we need to find the equation. Ah. You know, this one looks like some kind of Kirchhoff equation. IR, 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 IR everywhere. And that's usually the case if in DC kind of question you see an equation. Good chances you probably have to do Kirchhoff law. Which law though? Recommended to use second law. Kirchhoff's first law is about current. Sum of current into a junction, let's say this junction, is equal to sum of current out of a junction. Not very helpful. They're not exactly asking about junction. They're actually asking about Kirchhoff's second law, which is the sum of EMF equals to the sum of potential drop in a loop. So you're looking at loops. So maybe we start off by doing loops. We're not sure how to get the answer. Never mind, we just cut off first and we see what we can find. So the first loop we can make is actually going to be on the left side. So maybe we start on the battery. We go up, we go left side, down, and back to the battery. This is one loop, complete circle. So I rise by a certain value. So I can say the EMF equals to when I come through the resistor, I drop, potential drop, and then I drop again, V drop, V2 and V1. Ah. So the first drop is going to be I times R1, because V equals IR. So I just take current times resistor, plus another drop. Down there, it's going to be I1 also, still the same current, but now times R2. Okay, la, we factorize a bit since the current is the same. So I1, R1 plus R2 is the first equation from the first loop. Let's look at the second loop then. So I start here, I go up the battery. Ooh, I got lots of energy already. Then I go, 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 and then I go to the other side. Okay, I give you some energy. I give you some energy. You all share, share, ah. share, share the potential difference. And then go back to battery. There's my second loop. Let's call this loop two. So I also have... In the beginning, I have a certain amount of energy thanks to the EMF. Then I drop the first one. Let's call this V3. That will be I times R. So I2 is flowing through a resistance R3. Then another drop down here. That one is going to be also I2. Still I2 are flowing. But now times R4. I have my second equation. Nice. Let's factorize it a bit. This is going to be I2. R3 plus R4. Done. What next? Now, we have to look how do we get the answer. We have two equations, but you see they only have one. But I'm very close. You see, they got the I2, R3, R4. Somehow they are able to combine both equations into one. If we look at this, what is same between both of these is actually the EMF. Both loops are powered by the same EMF. So I can equate them. If you want to think of it physically, EMF here is supplied to this entire loop and also this entire loop because they're all in parallel. Okay, let's uh, equate. So I'm going to say, all right, let's equate since they both have the same EMF. This is E. On the left side, I have I1, R1 plus R2. Equate with the right side. I have I2. Let's move this down a bit. Eh, hey, I'll see already. Oh, R3 plus R4. But you see the question, the answer, they all write in terms of zero, right? So we move everything a bit. Lah. So this one is I1, R1 plus R2. Minus I2, R3 plus R4. Equals to zero. So the best choice for that that matches what I have is going to be this one, minus. It takes a bit of practice to be able to recognize and play around with the equation. So I recommend if you found it hard or you got stuck in the beginning, practice writing out Kirchhoff's law like this, thinking of loops, and then putting in the values and see, oh, I can make this equation, I can make that equation. It's a valuable skill. All right, that's all for this question.